This is episode 382, recorded September 16th, 2016. Packard pokes at, but the Bible said I could. I want to thank Tom the Atheist on from the chat room for this week's show title. What time is it? It's Packard pokes at time. Hat? Check. Shirt? Check. Pants? Optional. Mug? Double check. Check us out at cafepress.com slash packerpokesat where you can get all this great merchandise and more. Do you like Packard Pokesat and want to hear it on demand and on the go? Download the free app today at stitcher.com. Available on iOS, Android, Nook, and iPad. This is Packard Pokesat and I'm poking at your news. Your news. Good evening, everybody. I am your immutable and unmutable host, Pack and Sonic, and joining me tonight from the far west coast is Connie Practical Magic Nine. Ooh, Trumpy Dumpty sat on a wall. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I thought he was the annoying orange. Yeah, he is an annoying orange. He is an annoying orange. You know, the thing is, I don't want to refer to him as a Cheeto anymore because I like Cheetos. I don't like Trump. <laughs> Trump makes Cheetos look bad, and that pisses me off. And join us from the far <laughs> south of me, of the ill that is Illinois, is Tom the Atheist on. A.K.A. Tom, your friendly neighborhood atheist. Yes. I'm sorry, Tom, you asked me to. What? <laughs> <laughs> I've had one of those days. <laughs> and shifting all the way out back west again is Unworshipped Deity from YouTube. He's also out there from the far, far west coast as well. Mm -hmm. Howdy, folks. Before we get started, I don't push this very often, but uh, we have a donation page for the show here. It's over at the GoFundMe page, and really need your help. I, as of this morning, I am literally quite down to my last two dollars in my bank. Packard's payday. Packard's payday. Look for Packard payday on GoFundMe GoFundMe. this morning. Yeah, GoFundMe. So I could an ongoing and ongoing. place yes Yes. i seriously need your help i don't generally like to ask for money but i am i am in desperate situation at this moment but anyway not to bring the whole show down right before we even get started but it's it's something i needed to talk about can you imagine uh, uh, supporting uh or being comfortable if a if a muslim ever became president of the united states um i can say that you know it's something that at some point could happen We'll see. I mean, you know, it's something that could happen. Would I be comfortable? I don't know if we have to address it right now, but I think uh, it is certainly something that could happen. You said you'd had no problem putting a Muslim in your cabinet. Some people have said it already happened, frankly. Yeah, that's Donald Trump. We swapped on our regular audio clip for our Trump clip for this evening because, well, he's in the news, you know. I don't know why. I mean, he's only running for president. (laughs) (laughs) This is a this is a, a comedy movie, right? Yeah, yeah. I and we're all the all day suckers for the movie that paid to see it, unfortunately, or didn't pay to see it. I don't know which at this point. But he's out doing his campaigning in all these weird places, and this one particular church invited him in. Why I don't know. Maybe it's like, hey, we had the Trump rub off, which I don't think I'd want to have anything of Trump's rubbing off on me or anywhere near me. but he apparently went to this one particular church out in flint michigan to talk about the water situation out there i guess and he got up on the pulpit there he started saying hillary failed on the economy just like she has failed on foreign policy everything she touched didn't work out nothing and the reverend there who's a lady by the way which kudos you know you get the, the ladies get to believe is and be in charge of all the bullshit out there just as much, because, <laughs> but she actually had the ovaries. I'm not gonna say balls because you know that's where those are. <laughs> she, she had the ovaries to say, "Hey, enough, stop, halt. I didn't bring you in here to talk about policy or anything like that. This is what we've outlined for you to talk about." It says we, and she handed out flyers to the news media saying this is what we sent them and this is what we wanted them to talk about it says mr trump we invited you here 
to thank us for what we've done in Flint, not to give a political speech. And the woman's name is Reverend Faith Timmons and said that she walked on stage receiving a round of applause from the audience saying that the fact that she actually did something that nobody else has been able to do, get Trump to shut up. (laughs) Connie, your thoughts? Uh, Actually, um, this small church is, or big church um, in Flint, Michigan, uh, donated a bunch of water because there's the, there's the water crisis in, uh, in Flint, Michigan. And that is exactly what Trump was there for. And he was politicizing this whole shit. He was making it about Hillary Clinton being this and that. And I listened to the video and the, you know, this awesome uh, pastor, this woman, this black woman, she said, uh, you know what? We asked you here to talk about the donation that we made, you know, the, the promo we made for water. That's what you're here for. And he's like, oh, OK, OK. But he's still and he is still trying, you know, he I'm regroup. Now, Trump has later gone on on national tv and tried to say that oh she seemed kind of nervous and she seemed like she had an agenda blah 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 but when i listened to the video again today before our show the pastor is out there and and telling her congregants you know be respectful this man is a nominate nominee for the president don't be bashing him She (laughs) she was out there correcting them as i understood it i was listening to it and yeah, so I don't know, you know, he, but he was, he was taking this opportunity to bash uh, Hillary or whoever was the Democratic uh, nominee. And he was just speaking out of the side of his mouth. Yeah. And uh, you know what? I, For Republicans I speaking out of both sides of his mouth. Oh, wait a minute. I, let me, let get me off the planet because that never exactly, happens. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> If we were if we were to make a video about it, I would think it would be Trump versus Medea, you know, oh, geez. epic epic <laughs> rap battle. And I'm like, oh, you know, yeah, just lay into him. Yeah, I give better odds to Gizmo, your cat. Uh, you know, actually. <laughs> oh, I always give him better odds. <laughs> always. Tom, your thoughts? It's a, it's a toss up. One, I, I figure they invited him there to take advantage of his status. Mm-hmm. They want to get, you know, figure they get Trump in there, then somebody's going to listen to them. Yeah. Or they brought him in knowing what he would do and figured, here's, we're going to make him look like an asshole that he is. And when he starts doing what he's going to do, that hmm. we know he's going to do, we're gonna just going to jump all over him and point it out to everybody. Maybe. They were probably hoping, I, I would I would like to think that they were probably hoping it's like, yeah, this is what we've asked him to talk about, and he would actually stay on point. Because they thought that they would be the first ones he would stay on point with. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that's ever going to happen. <laughs> the fact that he actually showed up, I'm, you know, I'm surprised there, but... It, I guess he, you know, you just have a place for where a lot of people can, you know, see him speak. That he he'll probably be there anyway. So the fact is, this guy is a, is a fucking butt munch to begin with, and uh, the the fact that they actually invited him there, and I, I agree with you. They probably said, you know, uh, well, if we can get Trump here, maybe we can get more people in the pews, and then we can fleece them more for more money. You know, it's like, hey, Trump sat here. Trump was here, so hey, money follows money, you know, all the rich people will be here. Well, no. <laughs> mm. worship Deity, your thoughts? Uh, well, he's, he's polling really, really low with uh, my fellow African Americans, you know, he's like oh, yeah. less than 6%, and he polled at like like 2% or 1% in Pennsylvania and, and in Ohio, so I'm thinking he went there to try to pick up some crumbs of, of some people that may of color that may vote for him. Yeah. Uh, uh. And when, and when I, you know, when Medea came out, well, not Medea, but when Faith, when Faith came out and shut him <laughs> down, she did it very nicely. I think, I think it was, I didn't sense any malice there. And he went on no. and if he's making a big deal out of it. I think it's rather unnecessary. Yeah. Well, covering his tracks, possibly more so, or, you know, uh, well, yeah, I guess he has to save face. Yes. this sort of, yeah, do the usual rigmarole right. with Fox news right. and people like that. Yeah. 
It wouldn't be the first time that Trump's gone somewhere and had somebody else said something completely different, and he's completely turned around and said and and lied about it. You know. <laughs> yeah. That's just kind of like Trump's thing, you know. So. <laughs> Lie is such an ugly word. <laughs> Well, it fits. Fits. he's fibbing a lot. There we go. Yeah. It's a it's a colorful truth. A colorful truth. <laughs> it's an ugly word for an ugly man. <laughs> a very oh. orange man. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Oompa loompa loompa. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm sorry. If I were to miss you, Trump, I think that's... Yeah, all he needs to do is come out in brown and suspenders and, and some white gloves. I think that'd be the only way he would lose the election is if he actually dressed like a Oompa Loompa and said, oh, I'm going to be your next president. Uh. And I was like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think maybe now they would finally get it. It's like, yeah, this guy's fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think he could get... I don't think it's possible for him to get to become to become unelectable now. I don't know uh, what he could possibly do besides walk is, around nude. I have no idea. Have you seen the statues wow. that people? In, the, this in one, New York? Yeah, the the statues yeah, that certain yeah, people yeah. put it, have been putting out this statue. He's Trump completely naked. He's big, fat, and shows a tiny, tiny little penis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see that. He shows his tiny little hands. Yeah, uh, very inspirational. <laughs> How is this happening? Yeah. How, how did we get into this? How did we get into this? Uh, oh, yeah. We have Fox News. They're the ones that actually created this monster. They don't realize it, but they created this monster. And tonight we have our guest host, Unworshipped Deity from YouTube. Unworshipped Deity, I want to ask you a few basic questions, and I'm going to turn it over to everybody else here. What do you believe or don't believe? Uh, well, I, you know, was formerly sort of a fanatical uh, God believer, you know, one mm-hmm. of those crazy folks. Then, you know, now I believe uh, that there is no no God that I can explain or, or rationalize. I'm okay. kind of I'm kind of wishy washy on calling myself a full atheist. I mean, some, sometimes I do, depending mm-hmm. on the conversation. Sometimes I go agnostic. Also, depending on the grouping, I sort of fluctuate between those two monikers. Well, agnosticism is just a subset of knowledge. So you can be agnostic about everything, you know, or anything, pretty much. How, how did you come to your non-belief, by the way? I suppose it's I just sort of read books and you know, just that's very a big boring. Co- that's very, very boring no, that's very just, common. It's I just like digested different information. Yeah, no, that's very common. It's like, how did you become an atheist? It's I like, read the Bible. I, I read the Bible. I <laughs> I read books. You know, other uh, other books than the Bible. You know, and the Bible. <laughs> I just marathon lots of lots of the four horsemen on YouTube and tried to find ways to. <laughs> I just found their arguments persuasive. Yeah, there you go. Uh, how do you go about uh, making your videos? By the way, oh, with the with the, the artsy ones. Yeah, I... you you make a, a variety of different videos. Yeah. I mean, I would look through your channel. I didn't see anything so much uh, towards atheism, but I mean, it's you have a variety of different topics. There was one that you did recently. You did a movie review of a what was it? The movie is like if he does Dallas. Dallas. That's the one that I was thinking of. The movie is like the movie is like thirty, forty, I don't know, hundred years old. What is it? You know, it's like the seventies. It's like the seventies classic. Yeah, it's era. almost fifty years old. You know, and thank you for not showing any clips on there because YouTube would have said no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was like more of a satirical video. I was like, you know what? You never see you never see people give reviews of porn. Yeah. I'm going to be that man. They're, they're usually they have their hands too busy doing other things. That's why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You uh, you have a very interesting style. You 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 add extra noises and visual fl- flashes and things like that. I was watching one of them. I I went into a rest. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, to me it makes sense. I'm I'm, I'm trying to tell like a visual, an yeah, audio no, I get visual that. story. And it makes sense in my head what I'm trying to say, but when people look at it, they take they take away different, you know, different aspects. They well, come that's up with a, something else. Isn't that the whole point of art? Or is you, you when you create something and everybody takes away something different from it? Well, yeah. I mean, it's easy just to just to say that, but then when you experience it, you're like, oh yeah, I guess it really is true. Yeah. That's not just a, that's not just a tagline people say. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> Uh, how did you come up with a name for your channel or or your username on on YouTube there, the well, Unworship Deity? How did you come to that name? Well, I used to play a lot of uh, first-person shooters. Mm. I mean, a, a buttload of them. I'd stay up at night, 
playing against people. And I typed in the word unworship, you know, unworship di- like deity. I mean, un- unworship something and it wasn't spelt correctly. Mm-hmm. And I tried it a bunch of times and I just typed it in over and over and over again. So I found the spelling that worked. And that's when I stuck to it <laughs> pretty much. I'm like, OK, no one spells it this way. I like the way it sounds, unworship deity. I like the whole unworship sound and the whole deity part. It's like the dying of the self. Ah, oh, it's deity, unworship deity. Ah, okay. I, I've been pronounced a deity. My my apologies. Oh, no worries. I, I've ceased trying to correct people. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. If there's anything on the show, I try to be completely accurate unless I'm kidding, and then I'm completely inaccurate. So. <laughs> yeah, it's really pretentious spelling. Like I, it's like the I, and then the I unworship deity is sort of like a, like a play on words that's meant to say, I no longer believe. Yet I'm like I myself am, am a god. Kind of like a oh. philosophical. It's like a it's like a philosophical standpoint, sort of. Oh, that okay. Makes no, that makes no sense except to people like me, I guess. Okay, well, no, I get that. I hear that from Christians. Like you think of yourself as God. And it's like, you know, <laughs> sure, why not? I just, uh, well, no, I don't. I don't mean it like you know. I'm a, yeah, like you actually have done more things than God has actually done in it ever because, well, it doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But now it's just a cool name. Like even all the pretension has gone out of it. So. Yeah. Well, it's it's still an interesting name. It's still an interesting yeah. name. How did you get into making YouTube videos? What what preceded you to say, "Hey, you know what? I want to put this together and I wanted to show it to the world." Um Well, I saw like a lot of content that that I wanted to respond to, but I was just too lazy to do it at the time. Mm-hmm. And then I became unemployed for a stint. Yeah. And I had Plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, "What's stopping me from making a, you know some YouTube videos?" So I went out, bought the bought the proper equipment, mm-hmm. and I think my first couple of videos were the first two years I was out. They're like very sort of atheistic. Made a lot of atheist videos and a lot of a lot of friends, mm-hmm. and I found the community. I, mean, I know that's a you know a bad word to say in the in the you know in the atheist community, oh. but I found a lot of people I liked and gravitated towards. And there you go. Good. I, I still call it a community, although we have our own nuts and crazies, you know. It no, just... I, I think that's exactly what it is, is a community. That's atheism. Religion has churches. Atheism has YouTube. Yeah. 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 The internet yeah. where religion goes to die. <laughs> <laughs> but I was always really nice to the religious people. I tried to befriend them. I was doing my best. I, I, like... I try, but... <laughs> I can't say it's always a good experience because it's like, oh, you're an atheist. Oh, my God. Where's my cross? Ah! Die, heretic, die. It's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, have a nice day. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I usually went and run towards, straight towards the fanatics because you know, being a former fanatic myself, I was like, that's a pointless conversation. It and is go talk to this person instead. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. That is a pointless conversation. I've had, <laughs> I've had lots yep. of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. More than I care to think about. What's another YouTube channel out there that you really like that you subscribe to that you're uh, fond of? Um, I think Atheist Atheist is like a new, it's like a new channel. Atheist Atheist. Yeah, that's what it's called. Atheist Atheist. It's oh, been out for about up. six I months, know. I think. Really? Okay. Because I got bored of watching all the all the atheist stuff. I, I don't like. I don't know. The last atheist video I watched was like I don't know, like two or three months ago. Mm-hmm. I think, like, I watch videos that deal with, you know, like, what are we going to do about Islam or what what religious person did whatever today. I, I mm-hmm. watch some of those from time to time, but I like the atheist atheist videos because he's talking about sort of like the, the Sam Harris, like, what is spirituality without um, without God? So he's talking about, like, yeah, a lot of – he's going towards, like, the evil evolutionary psychology route, which is kind of weird, but it's interesting because he's talking about a lot of you know, philosophical issues and how can we press on – Okay, I'll have to. I will definitely have to check them out. I've seen a variety of people in the atheist community. They have a tendency to well burn out because of the fact is that Christians they keep regurgitating the same things over and over again. They say A, you say no, that's not A, that's Z, and they say well no, it's A, and then you come up to somebody else, and after you've thoroughly trounced them, and then you come up to somebody else who's like well they say the same thing, and it's like. Can you guys not come up with better arguments? You, you're just like, you're totally uh, get tired of it after a while. I mean, just like, ah, <laughs> I have to deal with another ass monkey here. 
<laughs> I don't know. Like, unless it's like some sort of political religious stance, it's all the the argument between the religious and the and atheist is just very static. There's like no other. There's no different arguments. It's just yeah. That's because it keeps whoever, going over the same mm-hmm. argument. I'd like to. I'd like to see some new arguments. I haven't seen any new arguments from the religious camps at all. I mean, I keep hearing the same ones over and over again. What do you do f- outside your YouTube persona? Do you have a, like a job? Do you hunt squirrels? What do you do? <laughs> well, I'm currently trying to like I'm employed right now doing some like labor job or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I'm currently studying uh you know, I want to be like an IT, just do a job oh, that okay. I I can sit on my ass all day essentially. <laughs> I'm just being straight, you know. <laughs> I do that already, sort of. <laughs> Well, you know, something. You know, I wanted to do something in the, in the field of tech, something kind of mm. low rent and kind of kind of out of the way, but yet you know pays the bills. So that's what I'm studying right now. Wait, 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 wait. There, pay, a job that pays the bills. Let me write this down. Uh, a job <laughs> that pays the bills. Well, you know, you just like that. something that I could do kind of part time, and then I, then after I, I get that all settled, I want to uh, do another kind of uh, YouTube channel, one I can profit from. Do something a little bit more streamlined. Wait, wait, YouTube. Oh, wait, YouTube profit. I gotta write this down. You, YouTube profit. <laughs> okay. I've been. I, oh, gotta, yeah. I gotta look. Th- I gotta look into that. You know. <laughs> Apparently, I'm doing something wrong here. Well, I'm looking to sell out a little bit. Oh, sell out. Sell bit, out. Uh, That's what it is. Sell out. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Sell out a little bit. Lay down some roots. Get the get the family going and. White picket fence and all that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, I maybe that's what I'm no, doing wrong. I, I I need to sell out more, or <laughs> I, I, I I gotta write these things down. Or the, I forget. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of like what my plan is, more or less. Okay. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna turn the questions over to the panel here. Connie, do you have any questions for unworshipped deity? Deity. Sorry. Oh, uh, sure. I'll get it right. Uh, what What is your brand of Christianity prior uh, to unbelief. My brand of Christianity to what? Prior, what? well, prior to okay, you okay. know, questioning, I guess. Uh, well, with my dad, it was sort of like hardcore Catholic school, mm. and then because my dad and mom got a divorce, so when I was with my uh, with my mom, it was sort of like a twitching in the aisles, uh, Baptist, like Baptist kind of stuff. Oh, okay. oh, okay. You know, tongues and all. I've you know. seen those. Yes, yes, yeah. uh, familiar. Well, I, not with <laughs> yeah. Catholics so much. But I was uh, more Presbyterian myself. Uh, I was in, up, but... I was involved with the Pentecostals. I saw a lot of the twitching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember my first encounter with twitching. It was really, really weird. <laughs> um, eventually, I embraced it, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> so, but not enough about me. I was watching your videos, and are they Uh-oh. all artsy? Because you have, I'm sorry, you have a lot. I just want to put this out there right now. He, uh, you, Unworship Diddy has a lot of videos. Do you know how, much, how many videos you have? Like 500 something. In how Over five years. years? Oh, holy shit. Oh. In how, in, yeah, in how many years? I think it's like uh, four or five years. This is. Yeah. yeah. yeah you are very, very creative, and yeah. I, as an artist, commend you. Um, Thank you. How Thank you. how many of those are like? Because they sound like poetry to me, and I was I was trying to listen to them. I'm sorry that I didn't find your channel sooner because. You are so artistic and prolific, and um, how many of these deal with subject matter in an artistic way because they're really beautiful, but they take time to digest, at least for me. Hmm. Uh, that, that's an actual question. I'm sorry. How many, okay. <laughs> how many are artistic? Uh, how many are poetry, um, do you think? Um. About it's like about half, about half and half. Um, sometimes when I when I make one of them, I I don't think I'm gonna put any any like word like any poems in it. I'm just gonna make it visual. Then when I finish it, I can see that there's something missing. Then I have to sort of scribble something down and see what happens. Um, usually, I like I have no plan until I start working on it. Like when I start working on it, then mm-hmm. that's when it sort of everything yeah. starts to come. And then as soon yeah. as I stop, it's just it's just like it cuts right off. Really? It's, so it's like I won't. 
was gonna say, I was gonna I was gonna describe it to a bodily function. I apologize. Uh, that's where my mind is. <laughs> you heathen, you! I'm such a terrible person. <laughs> no, no, I'm a okay. horrible, horrible person. I, 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 I could play out. I could like plan out the the layout. But if I if I like think to myself, you know what? This is going to be a poem about I don't know women's suffrage or something. Mm. Then I'll start to work on it, and then all of a sudden it, it turns into like a poem about loving the second girl that that I lost or something like that. Just kind of. Changes oh, up on morphs. me. And I just have to, I have to kind of go with the flow. Okay, so it, you so you let it morph into wherever it decides to take you, kind of like wherever the water goes, as it were. Yeah, like I've made like only like maybe like a handful of them, like by request because if I like if, with uh, the rules to a contest stuff like that. So if I want to sort of direct it, I can, but it's it takes a little bit more effort to do that. Yeah, and if drafts. Mm-hmm. It- I love that description, actually. That was um, something. uh, Well, shoot. Okay. Uh, VHS from like third Pokemon movie that was created. And they were saying that uh, that's the beauty of anime is that it, it Western thinking is linear. You know, you go A, B, C. But um, with anime, with most uh, Eastern thinking, it unfolds like a flower. It opens like a flower, and I think that that's really beautiful about art and about artists uh, who uh, just try to take the art, you know, what they're trying to say through their art, you know, through this organic process. And I, that's, I'm just, I, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to lose our audience or anything. I, I don't. And that sounds oh that sounded really condescending. Never mind. Maybe I should just shut up. Um, <laughs> oh no, it's all bad. It's all right. It's all right. It's yeah, and, and I think that was really awesome because I was like, I need more time uh, to digest your videos. Uh, not all of them, obviously. I don't want to put people off on it, but I would like to encourage people who like to uh, think about this thing and have it unfold because I think that was really beautiful about your your videos. I wasn't expecting that actually. I was just thinking about this very linear discussion. And um not to say that you're not you, you nobody could follow you, but it just it was really awesome how you blended that. Um uh, kudos to you. I'm applauding I'm applauding you. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome thanks. <laughs> so uh I I'm trying to think if I have another question, so maybe I should just pass it to Tom and maybe I might have another one. <laughs> sure. You yeah, that's fine. No problem. I, I, I interrupt oh. constantly anyway. I mean it is my show and Dude. everything, so <laughs> Gosh. I thought it was my show. Damn it. <laughs> Shh. You're not supposed to let everybody know that, Connie. Shh. <laughs> Puppets, pants, strings. <laughs> Tom, do you have any questions? Well, I was going to make the, the comment that uh, when you start producing your own content, you tend to wean off of other people's content. But I didn't realize you were doing it for five years. You apparently, you've been pretty prolific. I need to <laughs> look more into it. But uh, you said you want to sell out. How do you even sell out doing atheism videos? Uh, I'd like to know that too. If you figure that out, just let that me already. know. Oh no, I would I'd obviously have to make a uh, a different channel. Of course, uh, I would keep my old my old channel up, but I'd just you know make you know I'll make yeah. uh, videos about different things that aren't as a uh, I don't know like not as controversial as of yet. You know stuff like that, yeah. like something more variety ish. So, do you want to do something that is? commercially viable or something that you're passionate about uh i can for me it could be like a it could be both because for me it's like all about the i the, the production like if i could make something commercially viable it'd be interesting and fun to see how i would do that considering all my strange beliefs you know <laughs> how can i how can i mute myself a little bit yet still get out this idea vaguely you know i think it's fun you know that'd be fun for me to do and somebody forgot to turn off their phone. <laughs> that's not me. <laughs> oh, that's me. I'm sorry. Let me uh, go take care of that. Okay. Uh, and I had another question that just popped out of my head. Okay. Um, well, that's what best would play. It's either it's better to have it pop out of your head than from another okay, orifice. Okay. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> There's okay, a product no, for that. that. All right. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, do you spend a lot of time uh, editing your videos? Do you spend a lot of time doing production? I mean, I'm I'm fairly lazy. I do a video and I I pop on a head and a tail and put it out with very little editing. Do you spend a lot of time editing and uh, doing post production on your videos? Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, it takes it takes a long time sometimes. What, what do you, you know, what what program do you, what program do you use to edit your videos with? By the way, if you you don't mind uh, me asking, I use a Sony Vegas. Okay, I'm familiar with that one. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can sort of pre-program some things into Sony Vegas, but I haven't I haven't done that yet because I want to be more pure. You know, I want to get the video. Ah, just throw it oh. on there and see what sticks. Yeah. <laughs> but I may have to start doing that if, if, you know, the, for the more streamlined videos. There you and go. And I also use a Magix Movie Maker 17. It's like a sound mixer okay. kind of thing. Magix. I'll have to remember to write that one down for the Windows platform. Yeah. You should probably just get the real thing. It's like a knockoff. Oh. Much. But it was cheap, so. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I go with what I, I can afford. Free. Yeah. <laughs> it was the cheaper version. Yeah, that is the cheaper version. If there was something that would pay me every time I use it, I'd go with that, you know. Yeah. So, I had one more question. Do you spend a lot of time interacting with your audience? Um, sometimes. Every once in a while, there's like spurts where people would interact with me. Like, I. There was a woman that shall remain nameless that had uh, stalked me for a while. Oh, yeah, a stalk word. <laughs> yeah, she stalked me for a while. She would always just, no. just find me. She would find me. She was asking me all these questions. And at first, I thought it was pretty cool. And my friends were like, she's a stalker. I'm like, yeah, I have a stalker. This is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, no, it's not awesome. It's not awesome. Yeah, I, I've been in that situation. I understand. I understand. Yeah, then about the, the six month, I was like, you know what, guys? This isn't awesome. She's still talking to me. See? <laughs> so like, Duh. See what happens? So like, I want your babies. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful. That's how I got married. <laughs> oh, my God. The the stalking ones, yeah, the, the stalkers are just a little on the weird side. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, I interact with the audience from time to time. If I tell them, like, you can call me up on Skype or we can chit chat, and sometimes that works out. Yeah, I I, I get that. I I have people sometimes that call my Skype and say, "Hey, do you want to talk?" It's like I'm kind of busy. <laughs> Thanks for thinking of me. <laughs> I've had people call. It's like I don't even realize that they're even there, and I have just like stuff playing. And I'm like, uh, uh, you know, because I, I don't have that that area connected so I can't even hear them. So, <laughs> I don't wear the headphones all the time, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I usually keep in contact with the artsy people. Like, there's this Russian guy mm -hmm. named Milan, and he's, he has, like, this really weird voice, which is why I talk to him. He's like, he's like sometimes <laughs> the only reason I think that you talk to me is because of my voice. I'm like, oh, man, say that one more time, please. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on, Max. Uh, this is how I talk, Max. Uh, I was like, oh, I know, it's so awesome. That's, that's so like talking. Awesome. That that's like talking for someone from Canada because they've got the they they say certain words they boot you know <laughs> he's like please say it again. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a lot of cross pollination, uh, but yeah, I haven't talked to my audience for for a little while because I kind of I took a little break. Yeah, I noticed that your channel kind of went you know quiet for a while. There's like you know it's like a sunspot. On the on the on the sun, there's like okay, the the sun's like real quiet. It's like boom, there you are. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just YouTube was is changing a little bit, so I had to just take a little vacation. Things are getting a little bit too too dramatic for me. Mm. I was just like, oh man, I gotta I gotta take a sabbatical later, guys. <laughs> yeah, I get that. You, sometimes you just have to just have to get up and walk away. It's like okay, everybody, I'm done for a little while because the fact is this this is just a I, I'm getting too involved. I mean, I'm seeing YouTube in my dreams. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's none of the channels I want to watch. <laughs> it can be all-consuming. It can be. It really can be. I, I think I equate that with a any of the social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, you know, as well. You know, they, they have a tendency to just suck you right in. So on, on average, I've got like 50 conversations going on. Yeah. And uh, it's... it's... <sighs> You, you have to take a break, otherwise you're like constantly on your phone trying to respond to people. And yeah, it just takes up too much time of your day. 
I'm, yeah. I'm glad you, you were able to get up and go, hey, fuck off, everybody. I'm leaving. See ya. <laughs> well, yeah, I've been doing lots of uh, research on how to, you know, make another channel too. So that's been taking up a lot of time. I, I know some tutorials people. and reading information. And I, I know some people that yeah. uh, would be able to help you with that. I, Godless Geezer is one of them. He knows about this stuff. So All right, groovy, groovy. Yeah, there's there's certain people that you get caught up with and, and go back and forth and back and forth and yeah, it's 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 very interesting and it's, and it's fun to do. Yeah, uh, drove my wife crazy. It's like why are you arguing with these people? Yeah. Like because it's interesting, it's 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 fun to do that, but uh, yeah, it does. You get sucked into it, and you're like, okay, respond back, respond back, so I can, you know, I can get my. <laughs> right. Well, we're kind of yeah. oh, hopefully nice. we get questions for our guest here on, on worship deity. Well, uh, that's fine. It's something that he mentioned, and I don't know how much you want to go into it. You said do you have or had some strange beliefs? Do you want to expound on that? If you don't, it's fine. Oh no! As, as, you know, when it comes to like you know the political stuff, you know, like like feminism okay. or I don't know, uh, you know, stuff like that. Just okay. sure. like, very combustible topics. Basically. Yeah, feminism. Yeah, is very divisive <laughs> like, topics these days. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate because instead of it being in a discussion, uh, it winds up uh, winding up with bannings and and you know divisive uh like you know getting out the axe and just cutting things off thing yeah yeah for myself uh those topics are still really confusing i mean i grew up as a, uh i grew up as a christian and i grew up and basically moved into fundamentalism and so yeah example you know things like women's rights they were dictated to me and so i find myself re-examining them things like abortion and uh different sexualities and things like that and saying wait a minute well, people have this- sex wait a minute i gotta write this down wait, wait. What, what? people have sex oh, you're, okay sorry I, 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 get, get out the fuzzy pink pencil yeah i gotta get my i got i used to actually and have a really long pencil i didn't <laughs> and I used to, I, I would say, all right, pat, all right, you know, I'm going to go, I'm going to no. go a little, see, fire. there it goes. That's, that's judgmental, wasn't it? Yeah. See, um, no, no, no. I just said, no, I was, <laughs> see, Connie I'm says so. Then I'm go, I go way no, off no. the rails. I'll, I'll tell that story later. It's not about the show. This, this, uh, this segment is not about me. It's about our guest. <laughs> oh my God. But, um, anyway, I uh, just, yeah, it's funny because I, I find myself still really fluid about, certain things and i'm more interested in i'm more interested in human equality than i am about any gender or any race or anything like that but i also understand that there's a lot of hurdles we have to jump over to get to the place where we can just realize that hey it doesn't matter whether you're born with a vagina or a penis or even what color skin you have um, th- there's just it seems like there's a lot more that we have to get over and um, let alone you know, our own human predilection. I'm sorry, this is an interview. It's not yeah, me this... preach. It's not me preaching. So um, welcome to Connie's preaching session. Sorry oh, no, no, about no. that. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. I. <laughs> I will just shut up right now. <laughs> oh, no, I, I get what you're saying. It's, it's all good. Like, for, for, for the strange ideas, I, I, I'll still hold on to some woo here and there because it just makes I think me feel we all better do to, about myself. I think we all do to some degree because of the fact that we're human, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, there's, like, the karma stuff I like. I really like karma. I don't like karma. I don't like the idea of karma because it I, – I'll, I'll put a fine point on this because people think of karma as just, you know uh, – it only rewards the good. It doesn't, re- or it just rewards the bad. But if, in that instance, if you take if you take it to the logical extension, let's say some three year old girl got raped and murdered, and what did, what did she do to deserve that? Because that yeah. because if everybody gets what they deserve, what did she do to deserve that? Yeah, that's why you got a past life. Yeah, something in her past life she must have done. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, Karma is basically a rebalancing like said, like, you know, of the universe. I have some superficial kind of uh, 
Yeah. No, woo that I hold on to. I don't hold on to the whole yeah, no, shebang. I, no, the, no, no, that's the karma thing. I get, thing I get is, what you're saying, though. Yeah, the car, I, whole karma thing. People say that. Uh, I see that post. I was like, ah, karma's a bitch. Like, he, he, yeah, no. <laughs> we would like to think that karma exists. I, I just, Actually, I wouldn't. Just because we would like for people who do bad things to pay for them. And that's an yeah. I'm done. Yeah, no, it's I, a I, nice idea when somebody does something bad. You want to think they're going to get their comeuppance. You you'd like to think that, yeah, but yeah, it's... you yeah you would, but but that's again that's what heaven and hell are predicated on though too. Exactly uh, the idea that you or even uh, what wait, what's what's the thing the Catholics believe, Tom, between heaven and hell. Um, Limbo. Sorry. Limbo. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was that, that purgatory. in between. Thank you. That in between thing. I think they've canceled limbo. I think they, you know, I, I hope yeah. they, I, I, if heaven exists, I hope they, yeah. you know, I, I'm going to go George Carlin here. I hope they, you know, promoted him and didn't just let him yeah. off free and floating off in space. Yeah, because one of the two got, <laughs> got, you know, yeah. they decided they didn't have it anymore because it was like, uh, you know, babies that weren't baptized and died, you know, yeah, they yeah. went to limbo. Yeah. yeah. So people didn't like the idea of it, so they got rid of it. Yeah. Nice of isn't that isn't that fun about religion that you don't like something? Yeah, we just get rid of it. Yeah, 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 Once we it. start thinking about it long enough, we realize that oh, this isn't really a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't I wish make they just, sense. I wish they had just started. It's like, hey, if we get people to believe this crap, oh, that's a bad idea. Let's just stop there. <laughs> yeah, but for me, most like some of that stuff is kind of locked in. That I've 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 gone one too many times to Burning Man, so. Yeah. Gotta, How you've you been, you, wait, you've been <laughs> to Burning Man? That's the strange release. They're like they're like in there. You, wait a minute, but you've I'm aware been, of them. Wait a minute, you've been to Burning Man? Yeah. Man, oh, I would. Times. I I have heard stories really? about people going to Burning Man. Oh I have God. never been to Burning Man. I would love to go. Unfortunately, I don't have the gas to drive out of my driveway. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just uh, they could, just do it before you die. So that's all I have to tell people. Just you know, <laughs> if it takes you, if it takes you like two or three years to save, just. You know, go right if you're going to go at all, pretty yeah. much. Well, I've heard that you have to take, like, I don't know, your house pretty much with you. <laughs> and the plumbing, of course, because <laughs> there is literally nothing there. I mean, it's like you have to either barter or trade or die. Well, it's an experience. It's an experience. I mean, it's there are groups that you can go with, uh, you know, that basically they go on, like, in you know, two buses and it's like a shared communal kind of thing. And some people bring porta potties. Like, everyone has a thing that they, that they bring. You can. Hook up with some of those folks. How, like, if you much, really want to go, you, you can find a community that will. Uh, how much? How much did it cost you to go out there? Just if, if you don't mind me asking. Um, I've heard the range between five and ten thousand dollars to just to go out to this to, to do this thing. Well, like like five hundred. Five hundred dollars? That's yeah. No, that's not so bad. I don't you know if I want to go to an event where you have to bring your own porta potty. You buy like a hundred dollars <laughs> of food, essentially. Mm-hmm. And then cap- capping equipment and all that kind of stuff, and then you're pretty pretty set. Okay, okay. And it is the desert after all, so. Yeah. There's that whole, you know, freezing at night and scorpions in your trousers when you wake up. <laughs> <laughs> quite possibly, quite possibly. It's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty wild out there, that's like I said. <laughs> all right, well, if we don't have any other questions for our guest, Unworship Deity, can you stick around for the rest of the show with us? Yeah. All right. Uh, before we get going, though, uh, where can they find your channel? Well, it's on Worship Deity. Um, right like uh, on the screen, my screen name right there. You just type that in. And, okay. uh, for, the people who are li- for the people who are listening to this in audio oh. archive, <laughs> that's yeah, it's U-N-W-O-R-S-H-I-P-E-D-I-E-T-Y, if I've pr- spelled that correctly. Yeah. So, yeah. So if you want to go and check out his channel, please do so. Contact us by email at ppappodcast at gmail.com or on Twitter as at Packard Folkset. Like us on Facebook.com slash Packard Folkset. Call our Google Voice and leave a message at 662-709-PPAP or 662 709 Seven seven two seven, and we will respond to it on the show Friday nights at 9 p.m. Central Time. Join us live at vonlive.tv.
twitch.tv slash Packard Folks at. During the show, you can share your thoughts with us by calling 857-216-3200 using PIN number 35368 or on uberconference.com slash Packard Folks at. For links to the stories, visit our show page at Packard Folks at dot wordpress dot com you can help support the show by purchasing merchandise from cafepress dot com slash packard folks at or make a donation to the show at patreon dot com slash packard folks at if you can't afford any money why not share the show with your friends and rate us on itunes stitcher radio Spreaker, and on youtube for everyone that shares and rates us you kick ass The Atheists, The Bible, and No Wardrobe, The Podcast. Wait a minute. No wardrobe? You mean we're going to be naked while we do this? Well, seeing how I'm an atheist and I'm reading the Bible and since clothes are flammable... Fire! 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 I thought it might be a good idea to take them all off first. (laughs) Naked or not, follow along as we read, analyze, and try to keep you from falling asleep as we go through this boring-ass book. Find us on iTunes, Stitcher, and Spreaker. Who knows? We may even be on YouTube someday. And be sure to check out our secondary show. I can't stress this enough. The Atheist, the Bible, and No Wardrobe. A new episode, segment, whatever you want to call it, dropped today. We actually covered a whole chapter in one sitting. I know, right? uh, Who who has time to listen to the Bible? (laughs) (laughs) Hey, nobody got time for that. Nobody got time to listen to that crap. Nope, nope, nope. (laughs) We actually make it... Don't read it alone. Yeah, don't read it alone. We actually (laughs) try to make it interesting to some degree. I mean, we we actually, you know, discuss things, and we don't just read it flat reading. If you want a flat reading, that's not the podcast for you. Go to Scarsby. Yeah, go to anywhere else. Go Just put... By Bible on tape, you know. Yep. Whoever <laughs> listens to tapes anymore. <laughs> eight track. Oh, eight track. Okay. Oh crap. <laughs> oh no. No. <laughs> don't don't put that Bible on eight track. It'll never insert, end. Insert the lightning. Anyway. <laughs> Because there's nothing but death and refuse in the rectum. No life can come out of the rectum. The rectum is designed to get rid of death and waste. That's demonic, everybody. It is absolutely demonic. shit it. Republican Representative Steve King was interviewed recently, and they were talking about LGBT and the gay community. And he's saying that the LGBT studies on parenting are a hoax, like global warming is a hoax, apparently, (laughs) which isn't true. Global warming is real, and LGBT people being able to, you know, raise children better or as good as parents of a mother and a father have been proven. The fact is that he's going out saying that there's other opinions on global warming. It's like, yeah, but they're fucking wrong. We have a lot of data that says global warming is real. It's not a hoax. And people are taking care of their children. Doesn't matter if they're both two, two men or two women or a man and a woman, as long as the children are being taken care of. He said, I want to respect all the people, but I want to promote the natural family. Can anybody say logical fallacy he goes on to continue chris and i think that the most wholesome thing we can do really just because you you think this it should be that way i don't think so He, he continues on here the natural family is a man and a woman joined together hopefully in holy matrimony blessed by god with children And is also a Donald Trump supporter, by the way, if you haven't figured that out. Cuomo, who was interviewing him, cited scientific research that says same-sex parents do as well, if not better, than children of heterosexual families, which I just mentioned. He says, we know that we know what works. It's a loving the kid. This is Cuomo speaking. Giving them the attention, giving them the time. 
There's no reason to believe that you have to have a man and a woman to do that. And I completely agree with him on that point, which I'm glad he actually stood up to these Republican nightmares and said, hey, what you're saying is bullshit. And I would have just called him on that point. And he goes and he continues on here. He says, why not encourage anything that gets a child loved and provided for? But he says, I'll need to look into that further. And then cited, well, no, straight parents are better parents. Without any research, he just says it on the fly. Like, he has any say in the matter. Kind of your thoughts. I'm assuming that Steve King uh, was quoting the University of Texas sociologist Mark Regeneres. Sorry, I'm trying to pronounce his name correctly. Um, uh, study that they did on uh, children of gay parents, and it's been roundly debunked mm -hmm. uh, by and actually a Texas judge, uh, a federal judge. I'm sorry, a federal judge was saying that this is not worthy of serious consideration. But the uh, the religious right still love quoting it. Uh, no. Uh, no, Representative Stephen King. It doesn't matter, and there's so many reasons that this this uh, study that he's quoting it's not worthy of consideration. Uh, mm -hmm. The study was flawed in the way it was uh, researched and the study base that it was based on. Uh, and if you follow any kind of if you if you uh, fact check it, mm -hmm. um, yeah, no. So just another person trying to promote their gay phobic yeah. agenda. Yeah. If it mattered that there was a father absent, then all of all of the children, uh, well, or 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 a, or a mother, I guess, all of the children uh, born from divorce would be affected by that, and. There's no way to separate that out from the fact that they were born to two parents, you know, had two parents, mm -hmm. and then they split up, which is a different, it's a whole other different uh, dynamic, yeah. you know. There's an old saying that it takes a village to raise a child because... Exactly. So it, your village is, you know, more than just one person because one of your peer, one of the parents <laughs> do has to sleep once in a while. <laughs> Well, and, and again, you know, um, it matters whether or not the parents are arguing in front of the child True. and making the child feel like they are, you know, uh, the problem. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, but again, the, the, the sample size for this particular study was really flawed, uh, if you look at it. Yeah. Tom, your thoughts? I think people just assume that the way they grew up is the only logical way it should be. Yeah. That their experience mm -hmm. is, since it worked out for them, or at least they think it worked out for them, then obviously that's how it's meant to be, and any deviation from that is unnatural and, you know, just wrong. Yeah. It worked for me, should work for everybody else, too. <laughs> what, what a lot of fear. Yeah. I was just married to my sister cousin here. That worked out for me, too, you know. <laughs> So we should all get sister married. Of course, that's only valid in Arkansas. <laughs> yeah, a anyone who wants to dictate how a child should be raised or, or what the parental arrangement is 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 living a delusion. Yeah, they 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 can't see outside of their own experience, uh, and even if their experience is horrible, mm. they still think it's the right way to do it. Yeah. I have, to, I, have, I have a comment here from the chat room. Uh, Dead's Jetzer, thank you for your comment. It says, Dear Bible, my baby is teething and won't stop crying. What should I do? And he goes, the Bible replies, Dash it against the rock. <laughs> Stone it. Stone that. That's very spark. Very spark. <laughs> it's being uppity. You need to stone it. That's right. <laughs> God. <laughs> it says it in the Bible. You know, it must be true. <laughs> it's true <laughs> it's a good thing my, my father didn't believe in the bible I would have been dead many times over oh shit I, I think a good portion of us would be you know <laughs> <laughs> the only reason I'm here is my 
my grandpa died when my son, my uh, father was 13. So, oh, yeah. you, oh, you wow. lucked out then. Yep. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Calling me stunned. <laughs> On Worship Deity, what's your thoughts? Uh, I think um, Steve King is speaking to, uh, um, like, a, I guess his, whoever voted for him or whoever's supporting him, they're, they're still sort of not used to seeing, you know, men and, you know, men are women, you know, lesbians and gays, like raising mm-hmm. raising children. I, I just don't think they grew up with that because that's happened mostly still within our generation. All these changes have happened in like the last 50 years, like oh, yeah. leaps and bounds and, of civil rights. So a lot of the people who are against them are, are still around and can still make choices and decisions. Yeah, And I think that once – you know the the generations that are coming. Once they see that this is actually normal, it's it's going to eventually be faded out, and it's going to be seen as how could we ever have thought about thought about things like this back then? I you know I I agree with awesome. you. I hope that someday we will get away from these dinosaurs of thought and get them out of office, so we can actually you know move forward with re- humanity. Well, how long did it take for society to get over the idea that? Uh, um, a, uh, not a handmaid, but uh, who who is the woman who mothers quite often would have some other woman breastfeed their children, so they didn't have oh, to. Oh, oh, shoot! That, the that was nurse? very common a, thing. Or a having wet nurse. A, a, a wet nurse. Yeah, a wet, oh, a wet nurse. Yeah, yeah. Or or having you know having mammy raise your children, having a a, a black woman raise your children mm-hmm. was so common that people thought, well. Of course. Why wouldn't you do that? That's how it's meant to be. That's yeah. <laughs> or since you or what if you have older brothers and sisters and it's like, yeah, you're old enough to take care of your younger brothers and sisters. You so you're in charge while I'm off doing whatever I have to do. So that's a thing too. I have to say that when I talk with my grandchildren and they are already saying, Why is this a problem? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I am just because that's that's just uh, two generations below me, and I am so encouraged to hear that. Yeah. I just think that for the majority, yeah. we're we're only a couple generations away from a total normal, to, what I would call normalcy. Mm-hmm. This is nor this would be normal because it, it normal wouldn't matter. This well, wouldn't divorce matter. is normal. I mean, I'm in the middle of the divorce, and my my daughter is she is completely unfazed by it. I mean, half her family and and friends have divorced parents, so the idea of your parents not living together is completely normal to her. Where when I was yeah. growing up, when my parents got divorced, it's like, what the hell happened? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thinking about how people couple, how people. And, and again, maybe maybe our problem isn't a divorce problem. Maybe our problem is that we don't raise children, we don't raise people to be aware of who they are sexually mm-hmm. uh, and and what they need to do. I mean, we we have this idea that you grow up, you get married, and you have kids, and not everybody is maybe genetically or emotionally stable or not stable, but ready to ready to be biologically and emotionally uh, extraneous. And I don't know, there's, there's, there's so many questions it has. It's almost too many questions. I, I find myself really overwhelmed by the amount of questions that it raises. And I'm going to be very frank right now, you know, but it's more than we need for the show that we're doing tonight. So <laughs> All right. I apologize. <laughs> I don't want to overwhelm everybody, but huh. yeah, it's like, wow. You know, uh, did you, how, did, did, I'm sorry. Did, did, on, on worship day, a uh, deity. Did you have any additional thoughts on that or? Oh no, pretty much blew my load on that one. <laughs> on this show, that's easy to do. <laughs> I apologize. I'm a little spent now. Oh. I need some water. <laughs> okay, I'm. Do you I'm, need a cigarette too? Because this, just... this is practical magic. Signing off for tonight. <laughs> I'm just gonna bow out. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yes or no questions for me to impress tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. It's okay, okay.
there is a thing where people read the Bible and then they take whatever it is they, they want from it. And even if it doesn't say anything like that at all, which is why I encourage religious people, if you're going to cite the Bible, actually read the goddamn thing and don't just take the parts you want. Don't be a, a salad bar Christian and take out the little bits that you like and then leave the rest there. You either accept all of it or you accept none of it. And this guy, his name is Ian McCann, and he apparently did the same thing with his Bible. He thinks that his Bible says he can do a thing that he's not allowed to do. He thinks he can have sex with anybody he wants to because the Bible says so. No, 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 no. Now, he was arrested for an attempted rape and a rape charge, but unfortunately, the judge had to let him go free because Bernanello, I'm going to try, I'm murdering this name here, Bernanello County Sheriff's Department deputy who arrested him apparently didn't sign the court documents. It's like, I would have just said, here, here's the documents. Fucking sign them. And we could have put this guy away. But no, I guess we got to go by, you know, the proceeding of law. And I have no problem with that. The problem is the fact is that this deputy didn't do his job. So this guy was able to get out. Unfortunately, for a while there, they couldn't find the guy because he didn't show up for his court date and he was out roaming free. Ironically enough, a reporter, Daniel Tostido, Tod, Tesco, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm pronouncing her name wrong too, and her camera operator for KOB4 News were out covering the story when he just happened to be walking by. How's that for irony? So, <laughs> they, yeah, they did the right thing. They didn't try to tackle him and, you know, beat him up or shoot him in the face with a bazooka or anything like that. They actually just followed him around and said, hey, they contacted authorities and said, this is where this guy is. We're, we're at this place. This is the guy we're talking about. You guys are looking for him. Come pick the motherfucker up. So they were actually able to rearrest him at that point and get him put away. Kind of your thoughts. <laughs> okay. I said I was going to keep it short. Uh, lot. Uh, Genesis 19.8 gave his daughters up for rape. Yeah. Uh, Genesis 19.30 through 38 conceived with uh, two sons with his daughters and Deuteronomy 21.11 through pretty well, you know, you can do whatever you want to with your detainees, mm -hmm. make them your wives and let them go if you don't like them. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Bible is uh, extremely uh, jello fluid on its opinions on on uh, sex. And I think it has everything to do with the fact that the Bible isn't based upon an actual deity. It's based upon human uh, uh, human nature. Yeah. That's I, what I, I, yeah, no, I agree. I I think that, that's the way the Bible is written. This is based guy on is human fucking nature. crazy. Yes. <laughs> so I, I'm gonna let our I'm gonna pass the pass the baton. <laughs> I I am I'm, I'm convinced when they pick this guy up again, mm -hmm. his response was, "But I thought we agreed. I did nothing wrong." Yeah, I wonder if that's <laughs> I wonder if that's what he said there. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I am so glad that they, they were able to, to catch this guy. I mean, the fact is, I, I don't like the fact that this guy had uh, to go through the process again because the deputy screwed up. I mean, yeah, there are instances where the cops deal, when you're dealing with the cops, they do stuff that's wrong, and they know that they're doing wrong, but they do it just because they need to get an arrest or a ticket written out for somebody. But in this instance, they screwed up and they didn't put somebody who had done these things and accused of doing other ones got out. Those technicalities kind of, you know, piss me off, unfortunately. It just it's just it saddens me that people can read the Bible and take exactly what they want out of it. Yeah. To fit their needs. Yeah. And ignore everything else. Yeah. Even if it, even the parts that don't fit their narrative, they'll say, well, I just don't agree with that part of it. I'm just going to go with the parts that I do agree with, which really is very irritating. I worship deity. Your thoughts? I'm just perplexed by how he can say if I extrapolated that from from the Bible. I was I'm just 
confused. Like, is he trying to go for like an insanity plea? Like, <laughs> he got he got caught. He's like, what's the most crazy butt fuck thing I could think of to get me out of jail? Oh, the Bible told me to do it. There we go. <laughs> and, it, and he probably went, wait a minute, it, it actually says that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he actually took the girl, the woman, uh, from a thrift shop, which is run by a church Mm -hmm. connected to a homeless shelter. I'm wondering if he thought that that would fly because, you know, they're all connected to the Bible. Again, I'm trying to remember the name of the place. Uh, I wrote it down, but I don't see it here. Um, Oh, Joy Junction, uh, yeah, thrift shop mm-hmm. in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And it's like, um, it, I'm pretty sure that they're not going to let you get off just because you try to quote a Bible quote. You know, you know, you're in a Bible thrift store. Yeah, that's not gonna, that's not gonna fly. Yeah, you know what? I gotta um, say, I gotta say that this is the worst pickup line ever. I, I, I go to the bar. It's like, <laughs> hey. You and I should have sex, like, right here, right now. Why? Because the Bible says I can have sex with anybody I want to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't, I'm pretty sure that the uh, thrift store doesn't endorse that message. <laughs> <laughs> like, what was he expecting to happen? Like, the cops, they arrest him, then they go, oh, wait a second, you're right, we're going to let you go now. Like, what's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah was that what he was oh. envisioning in his head that the cops like, oh yeah I oh you're right it school. does say that in the bible let's see let me check my law oh, ordinance book okay. if they cite the bible we must let them go i'm sorry that's uh paragraph four uh <laughs> subsection d cartman south park uh <laughs> yeah sorry sir we didn't mean to interrupt raping uh, didn't mean to interrupt you. our bad go back to what you were doing <laughs> exactly <laughs> i'm beginning to realize something um Having recently been very involved in, in court and legal documents, I think that the Bible is written as a legal document. <laughs> in some That's parts of it, actually. It, it is just confusing enough to just be like, you know, legalese of 2,000 years ago. <laughs> well, it be yeah. vague. Yeah. Oh. Be, be, but be incredibly vague so we don't nail anybody down on any so- one thing. Yeah, subject to unless it inf- interpretation. Yeah, uh, unless it affects the the head ruler, in which case then, or or the head priest or whatever, and then it's sacrosanct, whatever they say. <laughs> Even if it doesn't say funny. that, we'll just make it up and throw it in there later. You know. The mm. <laughs> Jetzer said, "Same for the God told me to do it. People like the ones that kill their kids. Do they think that they will get them off? Yeah, they." Yeah, that I I want to bet you a lot of people probably think that. Or, What's scary what? is I think killing the kids got him off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some of those people. Some of those yeah, people. Yeah, I they, went there. <laughs> yeah, some of those people actually have they get put in the nuttery because we have this thing called you know reason. <laughs> well, do we put them in? The, uh, never mind. Do we put them where, Connie? No, no, no. Uh, too too big a subject. Okay. Uh, what what's next? What's next, Packard? <laughs> Sorry. Just walk away. Walk away, Packard. Walk away. Just, I didn't see nothing. Um, <laughs> I see put, nothing. Put, put the story down and just walk away. <laughs> just drop the mic. <laughs> Boom. Thank you. Please. And your The hell was that? That was. <laughs> that was Weird Al. That was Weird Al. That. Yeah, that was Weird Al. The there's a website out there that thinks that the astrology oh. is a thing. And you can equate what happens out in outer space because the planets move in certain positions. It affects your life. And, in fact, it affects your life to where you're in the goddamn bathroom and how you decide to use the bathroom based on your astrological sign. A plumbing company is suggesting that the stars are going to have this big impact on what happens where 
what happens when you shit, basically. The Mr. Rooter plumbing created an infographic to flush out a person's zodiac sign to purportedly. I'm reading it from the article here. Uh, influences <laughs> their bathroom habits. Anyone expecting a big data dump? Okay, I'm, I'm re- like I said, I'm reading right from this article here. Might be disappointed. The company spokesperson said that the officials are looking at basic traits of each astrological sign and extrapolated on how they might affect a person's pooping style. For instance, for example, I'm going to read from the article here. It says, Tauruses are supposedly homebodies who prefer to wait until they get home to drop a deuce. Well, loud and proud Leos allegedly announced their bathroom business to the world. Hey, everybody, I'm taking a shit. Everybody, hey, who wants to come watch me take a shit? Like, nobody else knows how to do this. My my hubby is a Leo. Wrong. (laughs) But anyway, go ahead. (laughs) I went through these. These are not right. There's none of these are nope. right. None of these are right. None, none of them. None of them. <laughs> I'm not going to say which one is mine, but I'm going to say that it's completely full of shit. Actually, <laughs> I do like to read on the toilet. I, they got me down to a T. <laughs> not me. I am. I am so far removed from this thing. It's not even funny. So maybe astrology is. Sort of right? No, no. No? There was actually a study. This guy, <laughs> there, there's a study. This this uh, teacher, I remember hearing this story a while back. He put everybody, he put a sign on on, the, on this mm-hmm. envelope, and it says, these particular traits belong to this particular group. And they said, okay, now everybody hand these back and see if these things apply to you. And it's like, and it says somebody else's uh, astrological sign or whatever. And they opened it up, and it said exactly the same thing. Every one of them was exactly the same. So it didn't matter if if you're Leo, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Pisces, Cancer, whatever. It doesn't mean anything. It's all garbage. It's all garbage. (laughs) Take this. Take your art, your, your, your astrological shit, because stars don't influence anything but themselves. And the planets that revolve around them, they don't affect your life in any way, shape, or form. Well, the real news is that when the Zodiacs were created, it was long enough ago where the time different, this calendar has changed enough mm-hmm. that yes. the Zodiacs that we we popularize now don't line up with the ones that were yeah. officially the Zodiac. Yeah. Isn't that weird to think? I mean, that, that's... That's actually kind of mind blowing if you think about it, because yeah, the, the, only th- the stars don't align the same way they did when they were created. Yeah, so it shouldn't. That's matter. because we're moving through the entire universe. We're not in the same location that we were thousands of years ago. We've actually well, moved around because the, it was an Earth centric yeah. world. Yeah. Well, that as well as Correct? um, and I yeah. forget when this was, but at some point. The calendar they took out basically twenty eight days. Yeah. To to line up the seasons again. Yeah. Oh, that too. Yeah. Oh God, I haven't thought about that. Yeah, they they've they've actually got this. The alignment is based on you know what best time to plant crops and shit. When you see this particular sign, this the stars aligned in this one particular way. That's the best way to do these type of activities. So I think that's where it basically came down to. And someone's like, yeah, well, if it affects our lives on this larger scale, I can understand the, the thinking on this, that we should do these things at that time. Then maybe they affect us individually too, which is total bullshit, but whatever. Did you have any additional thoughts on that, Connie? Oh, no, no. I just I just find it hilarious because I have a daughter who's a Sagittarius and she's not adventurous at all. Actually, she's like extreme. Anyway, I, I can't share personal stuff. But it's, <laughs> it's on the like, show. These are so funny. I, I actually find the Chinese uh, astrology which is based on a 12 year calendar and there's like five different things based on elements to be more acceptable simply because there's more permutations. Mm. It's not that they're more accurate. It's just like you have more chances. It's going to be right. Yeah. You know, this is, it's just comforting to 
uh, look at this. And uh, I think, I don't know. I think that, uh, um, who, oh, sorry. Uh, James Randi probably called astrology poo at some point. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. It is. That's all I want to say. It is. We have a cu- quick comment from the, uh, the chat room here. D. Jetzer, again, thank you for your comment, says, The people of Omicron Paris 88 have totally different things happen to them due to perspective. So, yeah. <laughs> That's right. I, I find when anyone gets a little bit too uppity about how accurate uh, the Zodiac is or their horoscope, mm-hmm. I, I like to just give them all the horoscopes without indicating which one's which. Let's say, pick out yours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's funny. Hopefully, they didn't read them in the paper beforehand, or you just, you know, from a different well, source. That's, a, that's the other thing is each paper has their own separate, you know, mm-hmm. zodiac predictions. So even if they read in the paper, if you got a different paper, it didn't matter because it's going to say something completely different. Exactly. I remember when I was a kid going to this one restaurant that they had these little scrolls, a little. They'd come in, and I, I guess it was like a you know a little vending machine type thing. It'd say your your astrological sign or whatever, and then it, these little rolled up scrolls you could buy, and they're like I don't know twenty five cents. It, they'd probably go in there and change them every so often, I suppose. And I was like, oh well, this one's mine. And I was like, oh well, and I I had it for like a number of years until I realized like, oh yeah, this is supposed to change from day to day or week to week or whatever it was. It was supposed to be like for a whole week or a month. I don't remember. I was very young at the time. And I thought there's like, oh, this is how you are supposed to be for like ever. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> I was like, ah. But anyway, uh, on Worship Deity, uh, your thoughts? Well, I like astrology. I think it's interesting. I don't believe in it, but I like, it, I like using it as like a kind of like a social solvent. I mean, it works well when meeting other people in social situations. Oh, yeah, it's great for that. I mean, and it quickly it's... identifies an atheist, just like an atheist finder. You're the... like, hey, what's your astrology? Astrology's not real. I'm like, hey, atheist, to... how you doing? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Oof, thanks. No, I know many theists who are against astrology. But yeah, no, that's it's, true. The thing about astrology, it's, it's meant to be fun. Yeah. Not take yeah. it seriously. Yeah. And people who take it seriously is like, dude, really? <laughs> I take I take astrology uh, readings as being more of a, um, a confirmation, at an affirmation, you know, like, oh, I don't know, a daily uh, positive thing to take out there and think about. And it doesn't matter because I really don't think that the stars and the alignment of the planets are actually doing anything. But I like I like the little, you know, the little things that go out there and take your day. And I'm like, yay! And I'm <laughs> yeah. gonna fail, but maybe yay! I don't care, you know. It. I. I like to hearing something positive, and that's why I listen to it. <laughs> so anyway. I don't. Right. <laughs> no, I, I've I've dated a few witches, and uh, astrology and the zodiac was a very integral part of their belief system. And they oh, were very into it, and and you know they all wanted to do my readings properly. Your so actual I, chart based my, upon your my, like birth place and date yeah, and time yeah. of hour and everything like that. And and oh. years ago when I still had them, I compared them. They were all different. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh my god, yes. that's funny and interesting. I mean, it's like there's certain details that are like written down that they'll copy. But then they put their own spin on it, and their spin is always, you know, it's their spin. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, and that's, that is interesting. It, it's like the psychics out here. That, well, even in this little town that I live in, we've had these places where they have the psychic readings or whatever. And I went by where one was recently, and I think it was the same one. In fact, they closed again. They they came over in my neighborhood for a while and they closed. They didn't they, see it coming. They didn't apparently didn't see it coming. They rented this building <laughs> right on the main drag, and apparently there wasn't enough business for them to stay there. So they went out of business. Oh. They moved back to across town, and they went out of business there too. So yeah. It, well, the first sure time that um, these things are are fake is you've never seen a psychic win the lottery. Yeah, I'll start believing when I start seeing that. Constantly, uh, yeah. when it's consistent. 
I can't use my powers for my own personal. Yeah, that's begging the question. Except for you know, scamming people. Yeah, I'll use it. Yeah, that's a begging the question or pushing the moving the goalpost right there. You know, it's like, oh well, I can do these things for you, but I can't do it for myself because, well, reasons. You know, and I think a lot of them actually buy into their own narrative on that point. It's like they actually believe that's the reason why they can't do it is because the fact is because they they are unsuccessful doing it so it's like oh well i guess i'm just not meant to win because of those reasons you know be otherwise i'm a bad person for some reason if i win using my abilities which it doesn't make any sense for example if you're really good at drawing and you get hired by uh i don't know a, a studio like disney or something for example i'm just saying you you're using those abilities to get ahead it's not winning the lottery but you're still using those abilities that you you you've honed, you know. Right. No, that's exactly right. Yeah. It's, it it shouldn't matter. Yeah, it shouldn't matter. I mean, if, if the you're... if the uh, quote unquote universe uh, gave you this ability, then why wouldn't you use it? Exactly. Exactly. It, the universe should kill you or prevent your uh, use of those abilities if they're that damaging. Yeah. It, or if yeah, the if they're going to be the damaging, yeah, if the universe actually cared, if your if these yes. abilities were actually a thing, yeah, and it, they knew you were going to use it for harm, they wouldn't give it to you to, to begin with. I mean, I would think so. Except, anyway. except to fuck with you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, there you go, Robin Dupree Reed. I used the f word. Uh, she <laughs> loves. Uh, she's my. She's my f. Uh, therapist. Um, She's your fuck I therapist. Really, yes, but I oh well, I try not to say it that way because that sounds really weird. Hey, it's, I, hey, it's a whole new world. Well, you know. <laughs> anyway, what's the next story there, Packard? We're, we're, before we before we move on, before we move on, we have a comment from the chat room. Another comment from Dejetser says, "I worked okay. with John Edwards in a hospital back in the day while he was still <gasps> learning really? to be a psychic. Total bull. Totally, you're totally right on that. It's." It's all totally oh, bold. Oh my god! The fact is that you, oh. yeah. The fact is you actually had the experience to, to, you know, to see that. You know, he's actually learning his craft. I mean, learning how to scam people. Wow. Yeah. So, thanks for coming to the chat room tonight. By the way, so it's Thank all you. it's all fucking bullshit. It's all bullshit. <laughs> and tonight's funny tweet comes from Cruisin' Susan. That's C R U I S I N S O O Z A N. And they tweet out Life starts with everyone cheering when you poop and goes drastically downhill from there. So. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, you made a boomer! Yay! Oh, shit. The kids shit the bed again. So, yeah. So. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> we'll be back next week with our regular short show, so be sure to come and join us then at 9 p.m. Central Time at vonlive.tv slash Packard Pokes at, unless I can't pay my electric bill, which then I'm going to be doing this by candlelight. Don't ask me how I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. It'll be spooky. <laughs> It'll be spooky, yes. So come and join us then. Until then, this has been Packard Pokes that we just poked at your news. And that's a wrap.